welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. At Alice Lane, we understand the power of partnerships. Our goal is to help interior designers succeed with their clients, not just our own interior design teams, but everybody's. We love to warehouse. We're great at shipping. It's one of our superpowers. And if you happen to be local, we have the best muscles in the business. We've got guys that know how to hang art, that know how to position things that are used to us changing our mind. Um, So definitely tap into the power at Alice Lane of not only carrying great things, but being able to order things, claim things if they don't work out, and to be able to deliver them into your clients' homes. Even if you're an out-of-state member, we have amazing um, trade memberships. We have exclusive pricing for interior designers, home builders, developers, architectures, or architects, and stagers. We also offer 25% off the Jay Bennett Collection with 20% off all product, spanning over 150 vendors with no minimum spend. You can apply today at alicelanehome.com. We would love to be able to serve you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. Sue, how you doing? I'm good. I turned 40 last week. Thought y'all should know. (laughs) It was was such a fun time. Thanks, Such a great party. Great tacos. Tell the people what you did for your 40th. Oh, man. My husband, he's like, what do you want to do for your 40th? And I'm like, I want to go to Mexico City. But the second next best thing that I can do with an infant, like we're like Mm -hmm. a less than one year old in my house, is I want you to make, my husband's an incredible incredible cook. He's just like a chemist in the kitchen. He does such good work. Mm, you're so anyway, lucky. I am. I'm so lucky. Anyway. And he makes like, like it'll just be like improv tacos and he'll like take whatever and he'll make it gorgeous. And I'm like, I want you to think about a taco for me that you would name after me. I want the ingredients to be about me. I want, I want you to make me a taco and call it the Suzanne taco. And so he did it. And oh, it was so good. It was they, the best taco I've ever had in me, my life. Me too. Yeah. Seriously. Guys, in fact, Tom served me first. I'll, yeah, uh-huh. it's okay if I yeah please. Yeah. So Open. he served me first. I felt I didn't feel bad about that. I felt honored, and so yeah. I was like, I'm gonna jump in, and I got in the line, and I was serving meat. I know to everybody. Corey served me yeah. on the, my, the Suzanne taco oh. the whole night. So, so I was awesome. in the taco line. Yes, I love it. And his wife. Yes, she did it was too. Amazing. There yeah. was amazing homemade corn tortillas. Yeah. There was pork. It was a brisket. A oh, brisket. Yeah. But it was like I don't know, he flavored it. He did like the sweat rub on it, and it had like. I'm originally from California, so you use like this California chili mm. rub on it. It was so good. There was blood orange. Mm-hmm. I love any citrus, so like I included that. I love. Um, is it called? Is it jicama? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah jicama. I love a crunch. Um, pomegranates. I mean, he's got I, it. I have the list right here. Yeah, so you do. Pomegranates. Hey, there was there was cucumber, uh, peach, pomegranate. Uh, they, he just put carrot, but they were, um, pickled carrots. Mm-hmm. They were so good. Uh, jalapeno, um, Malden salt, which was mm-hmm. amazing. So good. The brisket and then a saffron and a uh, habanero heavy cream sauce, which oh, was just like, over so everything. Yummy. It was, Ridiculous. yeah, so it was good. so good. The Suzanne taco, ladies and gentlemen, yes, there you have it. Yeah. yeah. It's delicious. Amazing. Happy 40th With Sue. I love it. Corey, what's going on in your world? Nothing. Just enjoying tacos at Suze's house, you know? I love it. Yeah. A great birthday celebration. You should have brought your guitar and like, did a little ditty. You could have been in the taco line. You should have made a Suzanne song. Yeah. I should have done a (laughs) dedicated mariachi. I know. That would be fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. Weezer has a song called Suzanne. Oh, there you go. Did you play that? No. No. Damn it. You did have a great playlist at your party, though. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, oh. I, I signed my niece for that. It, it was really good. Yeah. Oh, the best. I love it so much. Yeah, Jess, what are you up to? Um, we are just, uh, gosh, you know, getting ready for spring, shooting the lookbook, which is exciting. We have a lot of new Jay Bennett products that are coming off the line that Corey and I have been working on. Yeah. And we're so excited because They're we're good, probably guys. in our, we keep trying to decide what we are. We are in our junior year of doing this. Yeah. Senior year. Anyway, the products just keep getting better and the artisans we're working with are better. And not that the first ones weren't great because they were, and it's the same team of people, but we just are, we're communicating more. We're taking risks. We're trying things. We have a pink rug coming off the line. I'm super excited about it. We just launched a few months ago, the Luca pedestal, which is just amazing. I love it so much. And um, we launched our own candle, which is exciting. So just a lot of little baby chicks hatching everywhere this spring. 
and it just feels really, really good to be in creation and um, to making products a little more affordably so everybody can get them and um, having them all available here in our warehouse so we can ship them out and not have to wait a year for product. It feels really good. It's yeah. going to be a good year. It, it is. Be a great yeah. year. Yeah. And we're already through January, you guys. Yeah. Ooh. Can you believe? Time, yeah. goes, time goes too fast. It's a trip. It, the rest it is downhill. Totally. Is up and everything else is down. Yes. So today's um, episode of Dear Alice is all about sconces. The reason why I felt like we should do a sconces episode is because I got a text back in December from a really good friend who's in real estate. And he said, hey, my wife can't see herself when she's putting makeup on. She must be in that 40, you know, sort of range where low light is harder to read in. You might need magnification. You need the right amount of light around your face when you're getting ready. And I said, why don't you text me a picture of what you have and I'll see if we've got something else. And he said, do I need one of those mirrors with like the ring light around it? And I was like, whoa, 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 tiger, maybe, but let's, let's just see what you've got. And when he texted it over, he had the wrong type of sconces next to his mirror, which was a really beautiful, very elegant sconce, but it had a linen shade on it and it had one candelabra bulb Mm -hmm. in each sconce for this lady to get ready in. And the light, um, the window was behind her in her room. So there was no light on her face. Yeah. So I was like, I hate to tell you this. I know you've been in your house for a a decade now, but those are the wrong kind of sconces for a bathroom. And I thought, how many other people might not know that all the different types of sconces and what they're used for Mm -hmm. to make sure that you're getting ready in optimal light Mm -hmm. and um, also that you're using the right type of sconce in your hallway or in your bedroom or so on and so on. So we said, let's do a podcast on sconces. Let's break it down. Let's talk about the types of sconces and then where they're for, and maybe share some best practices on the way. Okay. Yep. So we have a whole list. Yes. I'm sure when you guys have gone shopping for lighting, you can see like if you go to sconces or wall lights, there's a myriad of different kinds. There's picture mm-hmm. lights, there's swing arm lights, there's, you know, and so, but they all have like a, an ideal place to be, to go. Mm-hmm. And so, Yeah. Yeah. Should we start? I mean, let's do it. Let's start with the bathroom. Let's do it. Um, so this bathroom, like it kind of most often in a, in a primary bath or secondary bath, if it's a vanity with a wet zone around it. So that means that like you're, there's bathing happening, there's showering happening where there's steam in the air. There's sinks. Uh-huh. You can, mm-hmm. There's you can, teeth brushing. Yeah. It gets messy. Face washing. It's messy, messy. Yeah. And you can imagine that a linen shade in a wet zone, you know, it, the, it's not the linen obviously is going around, you know, a harder sh- structure or whatever, but it's going to break down if there's a lot of damp air, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, going on. So that's not ideal. If, if water gets thrown up there, toothpaste, mouthwash, whatever, um, it's not going to last. So mm-hmm. what Jess is saying is like those long bar um, lights, the sconces that, you know, you can, they can get wet, but they also give you the most amount of light mm-hmm. next to your face. That is ideal. Yeah. A lot of times we'll even put them on top of a mirror. Like if we're doing like mirror side to side, Mm -hmm. you know, from backsplash to ceiling, doing a trick like that, we, a lot of times we'll put the sconce actually mounted on the mirror. So it even doubles that light to shine around your face. All about light. look like a baby angel. Also note that those long bar sconces hold three light bulbs in them that are full size. Mm -hmm. And then they generally have a glass lens or a glass cover. They can be white glass. I think it's a little more elegant not to see the bulb um, and get the maximum amount of bulbs on both sides of your face. It's a little bit less desirable to have one of them mounted horizontally above the mirror because it's up above you. And if you really want to be able to get ready in that bathroom, that might be okay for a powder bath. But if you really want to be able to get ready, you need a light source on both sides of the mirror right at your eye level so that you can really see the truth about what's happening on your eyebrows or on your complexion. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just, you need to know that at a certain age because our, we change. My face is changing. <laughs> I know. Otherwise you, yeah. you, this happens to you when you get into your car and you like look in the rear view mirror and you're like, oh my gosh, I did not pluck that. Yeah. I need to pluck that. Like I yeah. didn't see that surprise. You're going to have to keep tweezers in you your have car. have like daylight all around you, right? Yeah. So you see everything. And so that is, that is the important thing when you're, you're getting ready. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. The bathroom sconce. So generally a glass cover to the bulbs and maximum amount of bulbs. Yes. If you're getting ready in there, if it's a powder bath, 
You can do lower light because you're kind of creating a mood. Nobody's getting ready in this bath. It's generally just a sink and a toilet. Mm -hmm. It's a smaller environment. Now, if your powder bath is also a hall bath for maybe a guest and there's a tub in there, same thing. You got to go back to a lot of light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would on any of these and tell me, I don't know if you're, you'll probably agree with me. We usually Mm -hmm. agree. Um, I, in any case, I would still put them on a dimmer. Yeah. Like even if it is your bathroom sconce, you want optimal light, but sometimes you don't want, you just like, it's nighttime. You just want to keep a dim light on. Yeah. And so you're not getting ready. So there's, there's different times, different times of days that you're going to have these on because they're pretty, yeah, they're pretty to look at. And mm-hmm. sometimes you don't have time at optimum brightness. Totally. And this generally isn't the only light source in the room. You're going to have a flush mount as well. Mm-hmm. Or you might have cans, but I think in a powder bath, you, there's no need for cans. No. I think you do one beautiful flush mount that deserves to be celebrated. And then you have sconces next to the mirror. And have them on separate switches. So you can have one or the other or both on. Cheers. I yes. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, if you're throwing a party, don't turn on that overhead light. Just do your sconces. Make it kind of moody. Light a candle in there. Mm-hmm. Encourage people to go to the bathroom if they need to. Yes. Yeah. I will say one thing when you're talking about that overhead light, like mm-hmm. if you don't have room on both sides of yeah. your mirror to like do the linear sconces and you have that one light. Um, horizontally mounted above the horizontally. mirror. Horizontally. Last time I was in a bathroom and I had that, I looked like Hannibal Lecter. Like it looks like a horror film. Mm-hmm. Halloween face. It. It's a Halloween face because it puts all that light and like you just get weird shadows and stuff. So if anything, I would like, if I had two perpendicular walls coming off of that plane that the uh-huh. mirror is on, I would rather have like bar lights on that shining against my face than the horizontal on top of the mirror. I, I would agree. still try and get that side light, be it on the same plane as the mirror or two small walls coming off of that. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. Try that in 2023. Yeah. If you purchased a home and it had existing lights, this is always a way to up level totally. without adding like a ton of cost to fixing up your home. You can just make your own life better by making your bathroom a brighter, better space to get ready in. Yep. Yeah. And learn the truth about your face. Yes. Yeah, I know. And there's <laughs> always going to be exceptions to this. I was like, we were having this conversation about this podcast and our COO was just like, dang it. I got that sconce at the linen shade that you guys showed in the design pitch of what you guys did this last week. I will say that that where we put those sconces, it was in a dressing room off of the bathroom where the wet zone for a little girl. Oh. And so anyway, yeah. Anna, that's why, that's why we use those sconce in that situation. Cause it wasn't in a, in a damp place and it just needed to be cute and pretty for this little girl's dress up. Mm-hmm. So, but yes. Yeah. So that's the bathroom sconce. That is the bathroom sconce. Should we graduate onto the hall sconce yes. or the stairway sconce or the fireplace sconce? It's all the same. Oh, gosh, These okay. are generally, that generally have a shade on it. They're covering the light source. It's just kind of an ambient, yeah. beautiful, soft glow. Um, that just makes it so that that long hallway isn't can lights that are fluorescent and it feels like the longest journey in the world. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, obviously when you're dealing with a stairwell that's sweeping up, you're going to be looking for height, mm-hmm. I think in the sconce because you're stretching from one floor to the next. And so you'll often see even like that triple arm sconce mm, sometimes like, yeah, you'll see like two, sometimes three, depending on your landing spots. Um, and I think those are so, so pretty because you're often not going to have like a ton of art. Some people will do a gallery, mm-hmm. but a lot of times like you'll have paneling or things kind of breaking it up. And I think the sconce becomes a sculpture. Yeah. Whether, whether you have art in between them or not, that's kind of like a hero mm-hmm. to be celebrated. So you can go taller. Yeah. And like, like with more shades. And like a sweeping arm instead of like a really structured rectangular type shape. Yes. You're going to want to get a little bit of an organic movement to that tall shape so that it breaks up the paneling. Yeah. I don't yeah. like rectangle. Like we've said this before. I don't like rectangle yeah. shades. I don't even like the half moon shades. Yeah. Like even though it's like flush against a wall. Yes. You're usually okay at the height of where that sconce is going to hit to have some projection. Yeah. You're not going to hit your, your head on it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I like, I like a projection and I like a full shade yeah. when I can. Here's the, here's a little designer trick for you. If we're saying we don't like a rectangular shape and shade and you're like, oh snap, I got rectangular shades in my house. Cause I built it in the early two thousands, you know, mm-hmm. where, um, Jeff Lewis was like a big thing and he was making these modern homes and all the shades were square, you know, or rectangular. You can have cu- shades custom made. You betcha. Yeah. And it's really not even that expensive either. No. Like we got a big shade made and it was like $60 that, that, for a, for like a lamp. 
like nice. that size. Yeah. So Suze, you had custom shades made for your sconces on your fireplace made out of a designer fabric, a pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you recall they were more than 16? <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I got the designer fabric. Yes. If uh-huh. I just did like the straight linen or a paper shade or something, yeah. you can do something like that just to make sure you like the shape and everything. And then if you, if you want to go to the effort of getting a really rad fabric, and putting it on that shade. Um, it's super designer. Mm. Like it's so, so much fun. One thing I'll say a little, um, thing that I wish I did. I still love them. I love them, especially like when the light is off, you can really see the fabric when the light turns on, you completely lose the fabric. You don't oh, see it. Interesting. It's really pretty still. And you can tell it's custom, but you don't see the pattern. And I'm like, oh. Oh, like that's just, that was a good lesson learned. So bring a flashlight me. to the fabric yes. store and backlight do. it. Please do. <laughs> Turn yeah. that flashlight on. I don't on regret it guys. On. I don't regret it, but that's what would someone tip. search to like find? I can't remember what yeah, lamp like, shade maker. Ours is called the lamp store here, but yeah, lamp company up in Salt Lake is yeah. where we get ours. But um, I would just say like lamp, lamp distributors, usually like whoever's going to be repairing that repairing it usually offers some type of shade service or like custom shades or they'll you know can even actually look someone. up that Google custom shades, custom lamp Salt Lake shades. City or wherever yeah. you're at your city is. And then, and you'll, you'll find somebody. Yeah. So, so I, what I was going to say is if you have that rectangular shade on your sconces or a lamp, go in and have them make it into an oval. Mm-hmm. That's so much more chic or turn it into a round right now. All the curves are what's hot mm-hmm. and get rid of all those hard corners, um, which would be lovely. Yeah, or if you're like in Angie Harrington's and her dining, mm-hmm. like it was, it was fine. It was just kind of boring. So we did custom shades there too. On her chandelier. Well, on the chandelier, on the existing shades. Yeah. Like just to make it more exciting. Yeah. So. Kick it up. Have fun. Yeah. Go that. crazy. Go crazy. Okay. So that's like your lower light, um, cover the lamp, the light bulb. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be next to your, um, up above your fireplace. You're going to put art in between or a big mirror sconces right there are amazing. Um, another covered light source, it would be the picture light mm-hmm. also yeah. considered a sconce. Yes. Should we talk about placement of those? Yes. Yeah. Art lights. Um, you don't have to put it over every piece of art, but like, I think on like main hallways or if you turn a corner and you have a beautiful wall at the end of a hallway, mm-hmm. you know, that you're going to have a really special piece there that you want to highlight and kind of draw people towards that. Mm-hmm. Put a, put an art light there. Yeah. I think that that's a really beautiful, just like center of focus Mm -hmm. to walk towards. And again, you don't have to put it on every single one, but if you have like, say a room where you have like very three distinct panels of finished work Mm -hmm. and like, those are very specific for art and you're going to have a beautiful collection, go ahead and put like three art lights. If that makes sense for that series. Yeah. You know, so you, I guess have the intention sometimes, like if you have a designer, hopefully they're helping you lay this out on like, this is a really great spot to highlight. Yeah. If you're doing this on your own, maybe start to build your collection, figure out what this room is and then figure out like, I know in my house, I have like two very distinct pieces that I need art spots for. Cause I'm just like that, that I know has become like this focus for me as I've lived here, as I've placed my art, I want to draw attention here and I want to draw attention here. And so now I'm on the search for the right art light mm-hmm. for those pieces of art. So be okay. Like kind of navigating this in a process, right? Yeah. Get the right piece of art, then figure out how and what you're going to highlight it with. Yeah. And if they're in the same room, you need to use the same art light for both pieces. If they're in different rooms, then you could not do the same one. You, yeah, you could switch it up if you're, if you're a little bit more eclectic and, and they feel different. A lot of times we will kind of keep with the same suite in a home. Yeah of the same art light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I had a question and this probably depends on the projection, like length of the um, art light or picture light. But is there a certain like uh, rule of thumb f- of hanging the um, picture light above the piece of art? Like it needs to be X question. amount of inches or is it kind of just like you just. Cause you want to take advantage of the beam spread on the face of the piece of art. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you obviously have the space between um, the art light and then the frame. And then you want to come down from the frame and then kind of the subject matter is what you want the beam spread on. Yeah. So it depends on how big your piece is. Right. Yeah. And also if it's really big, there's, there's a longer lengths of art lights to be able to get more of that surface brightened. The reason I ask this, cause it's like someone's building a new home, the yeah. electrician's just going to be like, tell me where you want these like right now. And you're going to be like, uh, I yeah. don't, cause I don't have my piece of art. So yeah. 
have you guys run into that? And like, what's, what's the solution? Like probably I feel like we just elevate, we do an elevation with yeah. the art on it and the art and the art lamp. Yeah. Like the above design, it. like mm-hmm. per proportionate to the wall or the panel that the art's going to be sitting within. Then we like draw a piece of art and say, this is the ideal piece of art, you know, mm-hmm. around that. And this is where I'd put the art. And it, you, you usually have some limitations that mm-hmm. are kind of dictating where that can go and then what the art is going to be, you know? So I don't know. Does that yeah, kind nope. of answer it? Totally. Um, and you can also like, if you get the piece of art, you can put it there and then to kind of play with the art light and work with your electrician to make sure that the beam hits it correctly. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. totally. Yeah. Guys, one of our goals for 2023, I'm going to put it here so we'll be accountable to it, is to have Dear Alice be on video as well as audio so you could see all of Suzanne's hand, doubling down okay. right hand motions um, as she talks because it's a lot more clear when you I can know. see her doing the runway. If you heard um, a crash a second ago, it's because I was moving my hands so dramatically that I knocked down one of our water bottles. Yeah. She, Confessions. But I do think it, very animated. I think it will be really good to be able to see this on um, video as well. Yes. Yeah. Abs- so because that's one Hold thing. us accountable to that, yeah. everybody. That, that's like what I love about you is you're so animated and it's, oh, man. yeah, mm-hmm. your passion comes through Yeah, and speaking with your hands. So I love yep. it. And Corey has great hair. Jess has an awesome hat. You can't see that right you now. You can't see it. It's so unfortunate. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so true. Okay, okay, let's move on to the next category. Um, Really fast. I will, like, I don't know if theater was part of that ambient Oh, yeah, light. let's do um, it. Yeah, we'll occasionally do theaters or rec rooms or somewhere where, like, they're going to be having a lot of, like, media screening. I would say home office also is a little oh, bit more yes. moody and darker. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. I mean, you might have a, the picture light in the office, like, behind the desk, this magical piece of art that you love. Um, yeah. But I do think that's a great place for a serious feeling and sconces really do that. They deliver that. They're, they can be very dramatic, you mm-hmm. know, whether you just want complete diffuse, like a lot of times you're like, where am I going to use a metal shade? Yeah. You know? And I think a theater is a good place to do something mm-hmm. like that because it's just going to be casting light around the shape of that sconce, yeah. which I think is really kind of makes a halo. Yeah. And those are spaces too. I'm just going to emphasize the dimmer on all of these everywhere like be it your stairwell your theater your bathroom mm-hmm. i just can't say enough good things about dimmers yeah also if i could just put in a plug if you're building a house i don't know if you can do this if you're remodeling we always like it if the electrician will just pull a whip mm-hmm. because we can help situate exactly where we want that sconce if they put a j box in we have to put the sconce exactly where the j box is so if you're trying to figure out sconce placements and you want some wiggle room can you say can you just pull a whip for right now while i purchase the fixture and get this dialed in and i'll have i mean what do you think you have probably six inches of wiggle room in any direction with a whip yeah i mean at least even more depending Maybe upon a foot. Like, yeah, yeah yeah so and the whip is just like the metal like conduit that the electrical is running through. And then he'll set the J box after that. Yeah. Once you give him the exact location. But yeah. if you're just like, Oh, you know how many times I've like ran into stuff and this happened at my house too, where they were like, Oh, we just looked at the, at the plan. And so we set it here. It's like, well, it wasn't supposed to be there, but thank yeah. you. You know? So, um, yeah. It's just the, a hard thing to get the sconce exactly perfectly, exactly where you want to go. Especially if you're not there on the day where they're installing these suckers, mm-hmm. you're like, no, 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 pull a whip. We're going to have a meeting about that. Absolutely. And the whip means you can't mount that without me telling you exactly where that goes. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. And behind the drywall, drywall, I imagine it looks like a whip. If you guys need like a really literal visual, totally. it's just kind of hanging out kinda yeah. loose wires and then it's waiting to be. Yeah, through. Yep, they exactly. cap them off so it's not dangerous, but for yeah. sure. Yeah, That's but I just wanted to put that here because I feel like if anybody's listening to this podcast, they like design and they care about the finished product. And so that's why I think everybody in this room here would prefer a whip to a J box yeah. to work with while trying to situate your sconce. I've been put oh. in a situation to where they're like, we need to know right now. And I'm like, uh, the, I don't have Do all the really? information. Do yeah, really? exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And okay. I think that's them trying to check their box and get out of there. You know what I mean? Give them but. a cookie, grab them a drink and say, <laughs> we'll talk about this next week when I have this dialed in. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we generally have that. That wasn't out of disrespect at oh, all. I don't think so either, but we generally have all that elevated and dialed in way before construction happens, but there's still differences in as built than the plan. And you still want to eyeball it, even though you have it drawn in CAD mathematically correct. It still feels different in person yep. with your eyeballs, with the height of the people viewing it. Maybe the wife is five feet tall. Maybe the husband is six feet tall. Mm-hmm. Maybe the husbands that are married are both, you know, six foot eight or something. And so we all just perceive things differently depending on 
the height. And we try to design to that as we're, we, we have a stick figure of a person, their height, but it still feels different in life. So just know that it's okay if you don't know all the answers and that the whip gives you a ton of flexibility to get there. And I will say usually like where the electrical source is on a sconce, like sometimes it's low on the fixture, sometimes it's high on the fixture and that can like be a huge yeah, that's big in the decision making on exactly where that needs to be mounted. Yeah. And if you're not working in CAD, like even if you if you are working in CAD, know that there's like lighting libraries like for a lot of the big lighting vendors. So we can actually pull that CAD drawing of that light, put it on CAD and measure exactly what the height of our clients where that should ideally sit. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it in our office. Yeah. But if, you know, just know that that exists. Totally. Um, one other thing, just one other thing I was thinking about on the art light, a lot of times we will do them in built-ins. Yes. You know, like if you have a tall ceiling, one of the ways that we try and pull that down is by adding finish work and we'll have a crown and we'll have what we call like a freeze or just like kind of a flat portion to kind of pull the usable space down. So it's usable. And so on that freeze, it's usually a good spot to mount an art light to kind of cast down on your collections of books and just mm -hmm. give like another layer of lighting. And so just know that that is also considered a kind of an art light. Yeah. And Obviously, it's nice that you said that there's different widths on those. You can get them usually like in an eight inch, 12 inch, 18, 30, whatever. Um, so be discerning about that. And then also I've been run into the issue when we've bought, we've gotten art lights and they don't adjust they, mm. the actual, like that long metal shade. It doesn't turn. It's just fixed. And so you always see the guts. You see the, the light lighting. source, you see the light source. Mm -hmm. You see just like some of the mechanics and some of them like look for ones that can rotate. Like that's a, a pivoting yeah. part shade. So you can point it back. Pro tip. The, I can point it back. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have to see a fix because the, they sit so high that you're seeing up the skirt every time you walk by. Yep. And it's just not cute. And so just try and look out for that. Yeah. Only perverts like that kind of light. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Totally. Okay. Awesome. Um, next I was like, we had a nightstand. Nice yes. We had, I had a client like back in 2015 and she had a big house. It was this big, beautiful house that we were designing and like she had this really great bed, very tall. She had like these like chests for nice stands, right? They're about 48 inches on each side. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, we don't like anything on our nightstands. And so we'd like to do sconces. And I'm like, ah, oh, mother effer, like, mm -hmm. what are we going to put on a 48 inch surface if you don't have a lamp? And you don't like anything on the surface. And you don't like anything. I'm like, I should have gotten you just like small little pedestals for your drink, or I don't know what you're putting on there. Um, I would never do that. But just to say, like, yeah, we love lamps next to beds. We do. It so. adds the height that you need. Also, the swing arm mechanism. Inevitably, you're going to have a kid or somebody not use it right, and they're almost broken half the time. I look at Ooh. one. The shade is always tilted. It is. It never lies straight. A lamp doesn't need to move. Like once you set it, just like leave it. Nobody, right. nobody futs with it. Don't be futzing with the shade or the harp or anything else. And you get yourself Delicate a creatures. swing arm sconce and you're just asking for it. Yeah. That's all I want to say about that. Unless let's just say that your kids are raised. You don't have nieces and nephews over in your house. Often you're the perfect candidate for the swing arm sconce. Generally you probably live in the South too. Yeah. And you're limited or you're limited on space yes. or you don't have room for like full nightstands with that. If that's the case and you don't have room for it's a full, great 36, solution. 48 inch yep. nightstands, go for the, go for the sconce. Yeah. But you don't adjust them often. Just you know what I mean? It. Just don't like, touch it. Shh, watch away. Walk just away. Leave it. <laughs> like leave yeah. it in its, in its perfect position. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of like the Roman shade. That. Like don't fuss with it too much. No, just get, get it stationary and have a drop down shade behind it that yeah, functions with the button. Definitely. Um, I was going to say the one place I would maybe consider using that obviously small spaces, but if you have a built in, mm -hmm. it can be really cute. Like, for Oh yeah. A, a little bench. A little, yeah. If that's mm -hmm. a place that you're going to read to your babies or something, have one high enough that you can reach it, that cast light down mm -hmm. that your kids aren't going to screw And up. don't touch it. Don't touch it kids. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. The swing arm, the bathroom, the ambient light. What else do we have? Um, I think mantle, we kind of talked yeah. about mantle, but I think mantle, you can do something really special mm -hmm. because that is such a focal point. Dramatique. Dramatique. Big design. I know. That's where I did my like expensive shades, you know, with the designer mm. fabric. That's that your big moment. It's my big moment. Like mm -hmm. it's the first thing that I did when we moved into the house. Cause I'm like, I need something to like amp up this fireplace that yeah. I didn't design. 
what does it mean? And I remember you thinking mind. that you might need to just rip out the mantle. You were having this whole conundrum about what am I going to do at this crisis. 1970s fireplace? And then you know what you did? You fixed it with a couple Shoot. of custom shades and you even kept the cowboy sconces. Yeah. Oh no, no. you have new, co- you have new sconces. <laughs> new sconces. That's yes. right. From the Oli. Yeah. 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 Did yeah. you throw those bad, bad boys away? Oh, I still have some wagon wheel lights downstairs. You betcha. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I haven't gone there. That's, that's my Lord of the flies down the area, downstairs. But I just like send the children. Yeah. So I haven't even touched that down there. Yeah. Great. Gritty but loved it. It's called it zoning. Like, like they have so many toys down there. I'm an enabler. I'm <laughs> for sure an enabler. Yeah, you are. I have the kids more toys. It'll I distract love from the wagon wheel. Um, but that's, that's pretty much what I had for a majority of the sconces you usually have like the phone and it says like functional. Mm-hmm. That's usually like something that can articulate. That's not, you know, that's an art light. That's a swing arm. That's that type of sconce. Mm-hmm. You'll usually see a bathroom bathroom. They even like give you a hint there usually on most websites that the bathroom ones are the long linear ones that are going to yeah. glow pretty on your face. Mm-hmm. And then they have decorative. Those are the stationary ones that usually have a shade, you know, and a beautiful actual, um, yeah. base that's going to, you know, yeah. mount to the wall. So and it kind of defines a little bit of sconces for you. Yep, totally. And you can break the rule, like we said, in the powder bath. Sure. But other than that, you're going to want to do the decorative ones. They're low light. They're foxy. They give a mood. And you don't want to get your face ready in that light. How do you feel? Here's a question. Not a sconce, but if you're thinking about, hey, I'm maybe not a sconce. I keep seeing this pendant idea in the corner uh, of a powder bath. Oh. How do you feel about that? Also, the as pendants? the nightstand, some people hang pendants over the nightstand. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it 100% of the time. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, good for you though. I mean, you tried something, I know. but I just think it's, um, it's usually a contemporary house. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're just like in a mood and they drop three pendants and mm-hmm. they're in a corner and they're, what are they? Sculptural? Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just sort of floating yeah. orbs of They'll light. Tire it, yeah. Tire of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Different though than the bocce ball. Oh yeah. We did an entire curtain of bocce balls in a contemporary two story so house. The bocce is always the exception. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So that had For like sure. 24, you know, little orbs that were sort of floating in space. And I feel like that worked, but I just don't love it when people use pendants as lamps dropping down from the nightstand. Cause you're like, girl, you're never, you're never, never rearranging your furniture. No. Y'all are stuck here for the rest of your life. And usually a pendant just becomes a spotlight for whatever is directly underneath it. Yeah. You know, but at least like a, a full bar light that's next to you, you can actually like use it to put on your makeup. Mm-hmm. Um, I also feel like you need the sculptural body on the nightstand with the shade because it adds a lot of interest, adds the height. I know you could argue, well, then shoot, I could hang those shades real, real high if I want to add height, but it's just too hovery UFO it's not See, grounded. You know, it's gross. It is gross. <laughs> Another pervert. Yeah. <laughs> In the mix. That's just what we see, but you go ahead and try it and see what you think. Yep. That's what we think about sconces. <laughs> That's what we say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope this has been helpful to some of you guys as you're trying to sort through replacing lights or building a home. Um, we felt like it was helpful to just talk it through with our design team and make sure we were getting all of our P's and Q's. So anyway, we will catch you next time here on Dear Alice. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 